coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. We've got to know our God because it's not about us. It's not about what we know in knowledge or in wisdom of man. It's that we know Christ because when you know God, the God whom you serve, the God who you love, the God who gave himself for you, when you know him, you will be strong and you will perform great exploits because at that point, you know it's not me that's doing this. This is Christ and his grace working through me and I can do all things through him. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank you, and I'm excited that you have joined us today here on Keys to Kingdom Living television program. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, and we're bringing you a word that is the final part of it. It's entitled, Do What Paul Did. Paul had a lot to overcome from his past of persecuting the church. Now he's an apostle, and he's preaching to the church that he persecuted. Many of us have struggles with our past, and we're trying to... Uh, overcome these things, the insecurities, the guilt, the shame of our past in order to do what God has called us to do. This word is for you. Have you been verbally abused by people? People talked down to you, even cursed you, told you you were worthless? This word is also for you. If you did not get the first part, please go on our website and check it out. But today we're bringing you the conclusion. Do what Paul did. Check it out the things that God had called him to do. And it's for good reason because he was going to come up against a lot of opposition once he stepped out of that boat of complacency, out of that boat of religiosity, out of that boat of self-works, and into the ocean of faith. He was going to face a lot of obstacles, was he not? When the Lord arrested Saul on the road to Damascus, he began a passionate pursuit, Paul did, to know the Lord, who had called him into the work of the kingdom. Now, if you lack confidence as a follower of Christ, and you're not sure if you quite measure up to the Lord's standards or requirements for you personally, then begin asking the Lord to give you a heart of passion to know him. See, it's not about us. But Satan wants to make it about us. Other people want to make it about us. Who are you to think you are uh, uh, worthy or capable of doing what you say God told you to do? Can I get a witness? And so inevitably, that negativity that comes against you as you step out in faith is going to erode at your confidence and undermine you, and they're going to remind you of your past and your, your past failures and how you didn't come through, and then Satan is going to get on top of that with some condemnation. Sprinkle a little condemnation on there. makes you feel real good. And tell you and remind you of how you can't do this and how you're... Uh, uh, incompetent to do certain things and how you have shortcomings and you're not all that in the bag of chips yet and before you know it you, you're like in a fetal position in the corner saying God I can't do this and we must not do that we've got to know our God because it's not about us it's not about what we know in knowledge or, or in wisdom of man it's that we know Christ because when you know God, the God whom you serve the God who you love the God who gave himself for you when you know him you will be strong and you will perform great exploits because at that point you know it's not me that's doing this this is Christ and his grace working through me and I can do all things through him that's what we've got to do if we can ever get past the eye disease of getting our eyes off of me, myself, and I and say, God called me, God appointed me, God justified me, God is the one that told me to do this, then it is God is going to do it through me, and who are you to question me? You've got to have that boldness with Christ. Paul got a hold of that, but he, he thought he was all that before Christ. You wait till he got a hold of the power of Christ, the resurrection power of Christ. He was an unstoppable force. I remember when Peter was eating with the uh, Gentiles or the Jews, whichever one it was there in Acts, and, and, and Paul saw what they were doing. When the Gentiles were around, Peter would act one way, and when they weren't around, they'd act another way. And Paul stood face to face to him and called him on it. Say, what you guys are doing is not right. 
I mean, he set the record straight. And I can imagine, Peter, I know your past. I know what you did to the church. Don't you know they had to fight those feelings, those thoughts? Yeah. I know where you came from. I know where, what dump the Lord picked you up out of, Paul. And who do you think you are to set me the rock? Which people say he is. He wasn't. He was Petros, a piece of the rock. To set me straight. But when you're right, you're right. And Peter could not argue with what Paul was saying because he knew Paul was correct. And so Peter had to change his ways. And it's like, People don't like people who get things right with God when they had everything wrong before. Who are you? Got to get a witness. And they'll, they'll come at you with little fiery darts. They'll shoot things over your bow, try to shake you, try to rattle you. But you've got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Can I get a witness? You've got to do what Paul did. If you're going to reign with him, you've got to suffer with him. Now turn with me to 2 Timothy Chapter 1. Drop down to verse 11. Paul's writing, he says, To which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Notice he says, of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom... I have believed. See it? Now we're getting some insight into Paul, what made Paul who Paul was so that Paul could do what God called him to do. Can I get a witness? For this reason, I also suffer these things because God called me to this ministry, so I'm suffering these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. People remind me of my past. People remind me of me persecuting the church. People disdain me in, in Jewish circles. People still remind me of what I did back in the day. But he says, for now I know in whom I have believed. And not only that, I am persuaded. You, was, you weren't going to uh, move Paul off of this persuasion, were you? I am persuaded that he, God, is able to keep that that I have committed unto him against that day. Wow. Wow. He had a steadfastness in him, did he not? Can you get a hold of this word this morning? He, we need to get what Paul had so that we can do what Paul was able to do. He was unmovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord and in the grace of God. If any one of the hand-picked disciples of the Lord had confidence and faith in the Lord's grace, it was Paul. Now, you re may remember he had to deal with his past of persecuting the church after being chosen to be a minister and an apostle in the church. The Jews did not trust him, and ultimately he was sent to the Gentiles, as he says here in Timothy, and Peter remained with the Jews. If anyone had a mountain of opposition and condemnation to overcome in order to become and fulfill all that Jesus required of Paul, it was him. He had a lot to overcome, did he not? The Jews set traps for Paul. They sought to kill him while he ministered to them. Now take what he did as Saul to the early church and afterwards chosen to preach the truth to the very Jews who he had uh, previously persecuted and were afraid of him as Saul. Now compare his past to yours. If Paul could overcome all that he had to in order to be an apostle, who also, by the way, happened to write two-thirds of the New Testament, we can also. We need to find out what his secret was so that we can overcome any doubt, condemnation, or guilt in our life that we may struggle with that the enemy is using to hold us back from our full potential, reaching our full potential and becoming all that Christ died that we may become. We need to find out how to reach that full potential. Can I get a witness? See, I'm not about 
causing you to be seeds in Christ. I want to see you become mature sons and daughters in Christ. I want to challenge you with the Word of God that, the, that God has challenged me with and bring that Word to you and challenge you because there is inadequacy in us, but there is far more potential in us than there is inadequacy. And our potential is brought out by the grace of God through our obedience to Christ when we shut down negative thoughts and negative emotions and negative voices. Can somebody help me preach this this morning? He wrote two-thirds of the Bible while people were telling him he was not worthy to call himself an apostle. What grace God gave Paul. It is because of Paul's zeal and tenacity to know the Lord that he accomplished his heart's desire. The Lord revealed himself to Paul on many occasions while he was suffering through the furnace of afflictions. Although God and Christ had forgiven him of the past. Let me say this. God had forgiven, Christ had forgiven him of his past. The Jews did not. Furthermore, Paul took all that Satan held against him and met the opposition with faith in Christ and not in himself. I, it reminds me of David. David was so unqualified to be out on the battlefield going up against this champion, Goliath. Who are you that you should come out to this battlefield? Why aren't you there with those few sheep? What are you doing out here with us? He was not qualified in man's eyes, but God had a plan for him to use him. And so David goes out there without armor on, with a sling and a stone, to, to stand up against the champion, the, the winner, the victor of the Philistines, the giants. He was not intimidated by him, but he, so, he told the giant, Today the Lord will deliver you into my hands. David had a confidence, did he not? Paul had a confidence in Christ. Though he met up with that, uh, that opposition, and I'm sure there was probably times that he had condemnation come against him. That's why he wrote on condemnation. He had to get the revelation himself. He was able to overcome that because he knew who God was. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. That's what David said. He knew who brought him out there to that battlefield. And he knew that God was going to supply the need that he had to have supplied in order to do what was required of him to do that day. Consequently, Paul became a powerful force to be reckoned with in the spirit against Satan and all his works throughout all of Asia Minor. It was because of Paul's unwavering faith in Christ and his love in Christ's love, in Christ's grace that built him up in the inner man and gave him a great confidence in the Lord to the point that he knew who he was and what he had done for Christ's sake. I love that. Once you get to a place of maturity to where you know who you know you are, who you know you are in Christ and what you're doing is for Christ, then people can't touch you. Now they can they can hit your humanity and they can uh, affect your morale, but they cannot kill your faith. That's solid right there. I may have some bad days, but I am not giving up my faith for you or nobody else. He wasn't going to give up. The more the enemy fought him, the harder he fought. Because he knew the grace of God had redeemed him from his past. And the grace of God was giving him so much abundant revelation that Satan himself said, I've got to come there and personally buffet him. Take care of him. Put a hurt on him. He's such a threat to the kingdoms of darkness. Now turn with me to 1 Timothy. Yes, I'm reading out of the book of Paul today. <laughs> 1 Timothy 1, verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, 
but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Wow. See, God's bringing out some things out of Paul's life that really connects to us on a spiritual level that will help us so that we can fight our personal demons and overcome them and step into God's grace and do what God has called us to do as the body of Christ. Can I get a witness? Paul tells us in his own words that the Lord counted him faithful. That's why he called Paul. It's what Paul says. God counted me faithful. Now, Paul gives us the key to finding victory in our own faith walk, especially when Satan uses people and negative thoughts to undermine our spiritual confidence to do God's work. It was the Lord who appointed, who called him to serve in his kingdom as an apostle. That's the key. Has God called you? Every one of us has been called. Every one of us has a ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. None of us do not have a calling. Every one of us in the body of Christ has a calling. We have a purpose. We have an anointing, and there's a grace for us to become and to do all that God has called us to do. Can I get a witness up in here? It was the Lord who gave him the spirit of revelation and understanding to be able to write all that Paul did. Now, while there were plenty of Jews who have, may have argued to his face about him not being worthy to minister to the early church, Paul just kept doing what the Lord told him to do. Can you imagine that? You're not worthy to write. You're not worthy to preach. And while they're telling him, while he ain't worthy, he's doing everything God told him to do. Now that's overcoming faith. The kind of faith that continues obeying the Father and the Lord, even when everything and everyone opposes you. So let me ask you this question. Do you wrestle with feelings and thoughts of inadequacy in your faith walk? Do you feel as though you fall short of God's standards for you as his child? Do you have to contend with people as Paul did with the Jews over being accepted as a minister of Christ? I'm taking them all off. If so, then this is why the Lord has directed me to teach more on Paul in a single sermon than ever before. He literally, literally, Paul literally wrote the book on confidence. His confidence was not in the flesh. He, he dealt with that in Philippians 3. He says, my confidence is in knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection. And when I get a hold of that, there's something that happens on the inside of me that makes my afflictions, makes my trials, makes my past hurts just pale in comparison. Now, look there in Romans 8, 28. Is this happening to you today? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the what? The called according to his purpose, not ours. For, when, for whom he foreknew, whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he called, these, and those he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies us. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died for us and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who, who makes intercession uh, for us. If God through Christ has called, appointed, and anointed you to fulfill his purpose on your life, then who is man that you should answer to them? Paul tells us in Corinthians, you know, people will judge other ministers. Christians will judge other Christians. And he tells us not to judge another man's servant because that servant's not working for you. They're working for God. And who are you to judge God's servant? Because they answer to God. And if God can't deal with them, who do you think you are? Instead of giving God your excuses why you can't 
do what Paul had to do. Uh, instead of giving God excuses why you can't, then do what Paul had to do. He had to trust in the Lord with all his heart. Lean not to his own understanding because God would not relent. He said, I told you to do this, God, but they don't like me. I don't care what they don't like. You're not in a popularity contest. You're in a faith race. God has given to every person the measure of faith, and we're to use that faith and place it in Christ so that we can overcome the flesh in this world so that we can live to please God and not people. I was thinking about this this past couple of days. We're literally living in a Saul generation right now where, where leaders are pleasing man rather than the God who called them. And this is not good. Because while they're pleasing man, they're displeasing God, and they're going to be held accountable because they did not please God when they were pleasing man. This is not where I want to be. I want to please God. I want to be able to stand before Christ on the judgment, before the judgment seat of Christ and be able to look in his eyes. For absolutely everything, including people, which comes against you and undermines your confidence, you must begin to place your faith in what God has said about you and about your calling, both in his word and through the Holy Spirit, and begin to push forward and upward. That's the only way. There's no going back. There's nothing back there. If there was something back there, why would you come out of it? Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. Paul, of all people, had the audacity to write that in Scripture. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. He had found the secret. He says, as long as I walk in the flesh, I bring condemnation on myself. But if I will walk in the Spirit, God's grace will cover me, and condemnation has no place in me or on me or around me. I don't have to listen to what people say about my past, who I used to be. I remember watching Kenneth Copeland one day, and he was reading where Paul had wrote in Corinthians. He says, I have wronged no one. And, and Kenneth took issue with God and says, wait a minute. I remember where he persecuted the church and God checked him just like that. He said, be careful, that's not Paul. That was Saul. See, when you get a new identity in the spirit, you're a new person. Now, you can carry that luggage from the past if you want to. It's hard to carry around a dead Saul. That's a lot of baggage, a lot of weight to carry around. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law, here it comes, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Why? That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the what? The flesh, but according to the spirit. So let's face it. We're all weak because of our flesh and our past when we come to faith in Christ. Now that we dealt with those excuses, if you truly want to live for and serve the Lord, then you must overcome negative thoughts and negative feelings of inadequacy with your faith like Paul did. So when you start feeling like, well, I just can't do it. Well, people don't like me. People aren't receiving me. Instead of going down that, that score, uh, uh, rabbit trail, Say, wait a minute, God called me. God anointed me, and God has pressed upon me what I'm to say and what I'm to do, and I answer to God and God only, and what they do or do not do is on them. Is this helping you? When you find yourself struggling within yourself over your walk and calling, then go to the Lord in prayer and get it settled with Him. He's the one that's uh, called you to it. He's the one that has, is pressing on you to do what He's called you to do. Go to Him. 
Say, God, I have some in inadequacies. I have some shortcomings that Satan is using against me. What do you want me to do about these things? I want to address them if you want to address them. But if you're not wanting to address these things right now, they get the devil off my back. Can I get a witness? And God will fight your battles for you. He knows how to cover us because love covers. Once the Lord addresses the struggle with you in prayer, then who is it that will oppose you in the Spirit? God has given to, uh, faith to each and every one of us. And this faith must be built up. And it gets built up through adverse experiences. You have to exercise your faith. And the only way to get exercise your faith is to have your faith tried. And so you're going through trials. You're going through afflictions like Paul did. You're going through rejection and you're suffering things that people's uh, bad attitudes, stinking attitudes towards you. But all the while you're doing that, you're exercising your faith and your faith is growing stronger, not on you, but uh, stronger in the Lord so that you can obey him. And as you're doing this and as you're growing in faith and in the grace and the knowledge of Christ, it will begin to squelch the lying voices of guilt, shame, and a lack of confidence. That's what it's all about. We need some Christian with some backbones nowadays. It's true that I don't measure up to Christ in the flesh. But when I look to the Lord to build me up so that I can meet his requirements, then he does just that, and I overcome all my shortcomings. Like Paul, we can do all things to Christ who gives us the strength. Well, I know by the Spirit of God that the Lord has definitely made an impact on your life through this word. God just lit up this place after God uh, preached the word through me to the sanctuary, to the congregation, and, and there were people that are absolutely set on fire by the power of God because this word is liberating. It encourages us, but it inspires us to overcome the doubt, the fear, and the unbelief, and the negative voices that come against us. So I want to encourage you, if you did not catch the first part of this, you can go on our website. It's there, or you can call our church office. The information will be at the bottom of the screen, and you can tell them you would like to have either a CD or a DVD in its entirety without interruption, and we'll get it out to you promptly. As you're doing that, you can let us know how this ministry has impacted your life. And we'd love for those that have been watching for a, a while and know the integrity and the uh, soundness of this ministry, how that I only preach the Word of God. I do not editorialize or give you my opinion. I allow God's Spirit to preach the Word through me so that you can be fed pure, unadulterated truth, and by it, be changed and saved. That's what this ministry is about. Would you be a prayerful con uh, contributor to this ministry? Help us hold our arms up and get this message out to more stations and to do more for the kingdom of God so that together we can have a mighty harvest, but we can also have a reward on the day that we stand before Christ. As I get ready to leave you today, I want to encourage you. Send in your prayer question, your praise reports, the intercessors, myself. We stand in agreement with you and pray over these prayer requests because we want to see mountains moved out of your way and God bring glory to his name through your uh, healing, deliverance, or whatever you're having uh, God to do in your life. We want to see God do that. Would you let us know how God's moving in your life? We'd love to hear from you. Till this time next week, may God richly bless you is my prayer.